الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear viewers welcome to Islam and us program on Deen TV inshallah today we'll be discussing part 2 of our um, the Ramadan related topic which was the laws of fasting inshallah so laws of fasting just to quick recap previously we have Mulana Farhan with us here Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah so previously we discussed the the basics isn't it the, what, what constitutes fasting yeah. And then after that, the key terms, qadha and kafara. Qadha and kafara. No one can forget that. And then after that, things that do not break fast. Yes. And we started talking about that. Why? Because we don't want to... Some people actually see... I mean, most people see Ramadan as a beautiful month going into it. But you know that some people, they become they paranoid, overcautious. So that's why, just to letting you know, the first thing we talked about is things that do not break fast. Yeah, definitely. Then after that, things that are disliked. And then we talked about things that break the fasting. Yes. And then we are talking about asthma pump. So I think we'll just, we'll just elaborate on the asthma pump. Yeah, inshallah. inshallah. For our viewers. So as for asthma pump, you explain to us that the pump has some particles, chemicals inside yeah. it. Which doesn't only help you with the breathing side of it, but some it, particles. There's always that certain amount that goes into the trachea. Because it, obviously the key. Meaning the food pipe. Yeah, the esophagus. So once oesophagus, it enters the esophagus, pipe, yeah. and then it enters into the stomach, which that breaks the fast automatically. Okay. Alright, so based on that, my brothers and sisters, we have, I will be honest, we have two views in here. Yeah. One is the bigger one, which is what we mentioned previously. The scholars say because we break the rule of fasting in the sense that it is going to our food pipe, our esophagus, hence it's going to go down, whatever the amount is, to our stomach, fasting will break. However, there is no sin because there is a medical need. This is a medical situation. So the default ruling is that we make up the fast. For the remaining the remainder of the day, we honor the month of Ramadan without eating, etc. Yeah. However, we do qada of it. Definitely. So that, that, that's, the, that's the majority of scholars, Hanafi scholars, majority of scholars, they accept this yeah. view. However, we have these, um, we have another fatwa, isn't it? Based yeah. on, obviously, looking at the, you know, some people have extreme um, asthma problems. Yeah. And then after that, the idea is of asthma pump no, not being some sort of you know, energy boosting food type of thing. Well, so, sometimes there are discussions among scholars talking about that. It's is it used as a, it's not something that we consume. It's not considered as food. Therefore, should it break it or should it not break it's it? It's more closer to breathing. Yeah. So these are issues still of. being, di- these are still obviously contemporary issues that are discussed in further detail by muftis, but inshallah, in and the, the past, direction where it's going. As that Pasma pump technology develops, the ruling will probably change. Inshallah, so, yes, yeah, well. some parts. But I do know is, some scholars do say that it doesn't break fast based on obviously there's a huge medical need and it's more like you know you're just trying to breathe yeah that's all exactly. you're trying to do and also they look at and because we have a very tiny percentage that could actually go yeah. inside of they compare it with somebody literally washing their mouth yeah, rinsing their mouth exactly you still have some water particles left yeah you're not really going to get hair dryer it, there's always dry. be, there's always so be that's forgiven that so thing. based on that you know and you can live without rinsing your mouth yeah exactly. so you can't live without Asma pump. Yeah, exactly. So basically, that's a valid one. I would say, my brother and sister, speak to your local imam and your local mufti. Yeah, that's definitely going to be our first. And then, um, <coughs> excuse me, and then um, take the you know the, the appropriate fatwa from them. However, these are the two dimensions. Then you have smoking. Yeah, that's now smoking. No discussion, isn't it? Of it, and in Ramadan, outside Ramadan, I think it's something that we should avoid outright. But in the context of fiqh in the month of Ramadan, what happens with someone fast? If someone's fasting and he happens to have a smoke, now that automatically breaks your fast. Some people have this silly argument, oh, it's just breathing. <laughs> they don't know what the smoking is about. To me, a lot of people, they do all of that. They don't know why they do it. Yeah. They don't know what's going on in there. The Any, whole... loopholes. Yeah. <laughs> Any loopholes. It's never a loophole. They don't know. So do some particles from the tobacco or smoking, whatever, Go to the throat. That obviously, modern science we've understood that there's over what nearly four thousand different types of chemicals within a single, you know, cigarette. Wow. And there's thousands of Definitely those. Yeah, exactly. Go. And 
it's never just consumed, in, it's never just inhaled straight into our lungs. There's parts of it, residues that enter within our, again, goes into the mouth. You know some, I think, some, yeah. I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, you know when some people cough when they're smoking, coughing? Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean like... Is that the passive the, smoking? No, 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 like, is it going inside their f- food pipe a little bit? When a person smokes? When they're coughing while smoking. Like they're sort of choking yeah, yeah. time. One, what are the reasons, okay, what, what common reasons why someone chokes? It's because there are particles that have entered into the wrong pipe. Well, hence why so we tend to cough. It might happen. Yeah, I don't know, don't, don't ask yeah. your doctors that. Definitely. However, definitely some particles do go inside. Yeah. And that's why, even traditionally scholars said, you know, people used to burn sticks and things like Instant that. Normal sticks. burning has always, always been there. Um, it, it breaks the fast. Yeah. However, there is this, there is this um, concession or you can say exemption here. That if somebody is just happened to be nearby, someone yeah. smoking. Passive smoking. Yeah. Or someone, some people, unfortunately even some Muslims and sadly, they burn things in the garden while yeah. fasting. So, and then the smoke goes eh, Smoke's eh, everywhere, eh. exactly. So you're forgiven from that. If, if it happens to be an accident, you, you, know, you happen to be in the company of, someone, of people who are smoking or perhaps we're just walking on the road and we come across people who are smoking and we happen to inhale it. In that case, this does not break the fast. Alhamdulillah. Not... So that's the thing with the smoking and asthma pumps. Then you have injections. I think just one thing we can finish off is one of the, another discussion in terms of smoking is nicotine patch. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people are trying to wean off smoking, trying to break that habit, and they use nicotine patch. Does this break the fast or not? Nicotine patch, as far as the scholars are, most scholars are unanimous <coughs> on, it does not break the fast. It's not entering through our mouth or through the nose, and it does not enter the stomach. Would that so, fall under the next discussion about injections? And, like, I think mm-hmm. this is just sticking to the idea of smoking, because obviously okay. nicotine patch is That's not fine. connected to. Yeah. All right, Jazakallah khairan for that. So nicotine patch doesn't break the fast. Uh, just to clarify for everyone, injections. Now, injections are something which are, you know, especially in the current situation. It. It'll be yeah. vaccine, We're going to have vaccinations, that's going on COVID right vaccination. Now. Yeah. People are on regular insulin. You know, some people have blood transfusion. It's happening. Happy pens so and all these other depends things. On all of that. Yeah. So, what's the ruling of that? How is, how is all of that linked with our understanding of, you know, food or water reaching our stomach, reaching our head? And so going obviously, this the is mouth something. And nose and this is obviously another <coughs> major discussion amongst the scholars and within the you know the medical field that someone having injection does that break the fast? And the short answer is it does not break the fast. Again, does it enter the mouth? No, is not through the nose. Is not through the, a perforated membrane or anything like that. Is injected directly sometimes to the muscle, sometimes to the bloodstream. But that in, according to the Sharia, as far as it does not enter the manfa the mutabar and you have your jaw for mutabar, i.e. your stomach and your throat or anything like that, then in that case it does not fulfill the condition. And if it does not fulfill the conditions, therefore it does not break the fast. Just keep it simple like that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a simple if way of putting it. If you become too scientific here, it's going to be problematic. Exactly. Even if you rinse your mouth, you know, so technically th- th- This is why something. we follow basic usul. If those two conditions are not found, <coughs> it does not break it. Let's make it humanly possible for us. Yeah. Allah okay. has made Sharia. Allah is not going to burden a soul um, except that what the soul can, can bear. So, you know, then the, that's the thing. So, Alhamdulillah, because of that, you know, insulin or injection, etc., by default, they don't break fast. Yeah. That would include COVID 19 vaccination. So, if well. anyone so is just having. To clarify to all the brothers and sisters, please do not break your fast or please do not. Deny when you're invited for your COVID-19 vaccination. Okay, simply thinking that your fast is going to break. It's not going to break. It's not break. Inshallah. This is the scholarly opinion. However, there's a deeper discussion about if somebody was to have an injection for with glucose and energy and all of that. Okay, this is one of those issues that is still being discussed. Some scholars, again, this I would recommend for the brothers and sisters that are listening to go to the local scholars. But some scholars do discuss that saline drips or any glucose, those type of things that are injected into the body due to medical reasons. And in that particular case, some scholars say it does not break it, some say it does break it. Unless, to be honest, a lot of the time, if someone is on a level where he needs those types of um, injections or those types of drips, to be honest, he doesn't have to fast to begin with. As we mentioned before that, the two people who are exempt from fasting are those who are married, those who are ill, or those who are in traveling, who are in safar. Exactly, exactly. Next part, my brothers and sisters, is the hot part. And that is things that break the fast and they also require a qada, one for fast for a fast, and the kafara, expiation, 60 days of continuous fasting. 
That's there because the crime is big. You know, one thing called, you know, you know, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that Ramadan as She's the greatest month. Yeah. And then we have somebody who begins the fasting and then they deliberately break it. Without value. That's reason. what? That's literally, you know, crossing away the honor of the month. Yeah. And the honor, sanctity of the month and sanctity of, you know, even the Muslims and the community in your household. You know, it's just like, literally, it's so bad. Allah does Allah says, Shahrayni mutatabi'in. They have to, in order to get forgiveness, in this world they have to fast for two consecutive months yeah. without a break in between. In between. Yeah. So for, for whom is this? Number one, is someone who deliberately has sexual intercourse. Again, you know you're fasting. How can you do that? In one of the passages here, yeah, front or back. Although back is haram, but if someone does it, the ruling will apply, the fast will break. Or they eat, yeah. right? Um, again, there is no medical need, you know, they're not dying of starvation or whatever. There's no valid reason whatsoever. Valid reason or drinking as well or smoking as well, all of that. Okay. Anything edible, they do it deliberately. Fast breaks, qada and a third, 60 qada. days. Yeah. So th- this is, I think we need to clarify, a lot of the time the misconception is if a person made a mistake, he does qada. And if a person has uh, voluntarily, intentionally broke his fast, he has to do just kafara. It's qada and kafara, so not 60 days, 61 days. So basically, yeah. if they do that for five fasts, yeah. they have to keep the five fasts. Yeah. And on top of that, they have to do this one big penalty. Yeah, I think that's the next thing that we can discuss. Yeah. So that's what it says. So the one penalty is enough for Yeah. Whatever. So it's not where a person broke it two days. For, for example, if we have two days, first day of Ramadan, second day of Ramadan, they broke it on purpose. Does that mean it's 60 times two? No, it's only one kafara for the it's whole one Ramadan. kafara for all the... Basically, so if Allah, violations. Yeah. So, in a way, Allah has made it easy. Yeah. That you learn it less than one time. So if Number person, three, <laughs> there is no penalty, meaning uh, there is no kafara for spoiling or breaking fast in other than Ramadan. Now, obviously, just to clarify for the viewers, so if somebody is doing qada of Ramadan in another month, let's yeah, say yeah. in uh, Muharram or something like that, and they break that fast deliberately, what happens? Yeah. So that one, obviously, is not another kafara on top of that. You just have to make that Yeah, you just make that one up again. This was mainly for the month of Ramadan, the yeah. sanctity of the month of Ramadan, without a valid reason as well. Or even, if we, yeah. Number five, if someone breaks several fasts in Ramadan without a valid reason, we've covered that, isn't it? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how many somebody deliberately breaks, yeah. they do the X number of uh, makeups, qada, yeah. but they do one big kafara. Yeah. One suffices for everything. Simple example, you break three fasts on purpose, that's three qadas for those days to make up those days. One kafara as a punishment. Oh, jazakallah. Now we're talking about those who have fa'iddatun min ayyam and ukhara. Allah has given them the license that they don't need to fast in Ramadan. They can do other days outside Ramadan. Yeah. But at least for that day, they could make it up. Who are they? Number one is that person who is sick, marid. Who is marid? Doctor will decide yeah. that if they fast, their health will deteriorate. Yeah. Or you can, it could be really bad. So anything they can, can worth, Anything that can worsen your illness or perhaps even slow down the process of recovery. So yeah. doctor can be best to get a good Muslim doctor to give you the best advice. Yeah. And you can break the fast or you can even miss the skip the fast yeah. and fast afterwards. Number two, traveler. Somebody who travels 48 miles over. So they plan to travel 48 miles over. As soon as they leave their town, yeah. they technically become a traveler. They can fast outside Ramadan. However, scholars say that it is afdal, it is virtuous to fast in Ramadan. If you can. Especially in the modern context where mm. it's not like back in the days we were traveling on a caravan in the heat and so forth. But just to, just to know, some people do become travel sick. Yeah. The planes the, as well. Oh, there are certain difficulties. Yeah, the cars as well. So they have to have the water tablet. Allah has given, the, given them yeah. the concession. So this is why if you're traveling with a group, my brothers and sisters, and some people have these travel issues, sickness, etc. Don't look down at them. Yeah, you did, Allah you've, you've has given them that. In. But on the other side, let's not be... Be, uh, well, let's not be Take the first missing, out the, yeah. missing out the virtues of Ramadan. Remember, fasting outside Ramadan in some ways is harder. Because in, in no one's fasting. Speaking, yeah. You're the only one fasting. So you might as well just do it in Ramadan. <laughs> what about um, ladies who are breastfeeding and pregnant? Again, same thing, isn't it? Yeah. So this is another topic that you know, a lot of the time we discussed. What happened is in a situation where a lady is, happens to be pregnant, especially in the latter stages. So if it's been one of those you know, 20, 30 weeks you're entering... If it happens to be a case where she's already had her baby and she's nursing a child, so, so due to medical, okay, this is something that the obviously the sister will have to talk in discussion with. They the will have to discuss.
in the nurses, with their nurses. So this was something that yeah they would have to discuss with their you know wet nurse or whoever they is there to say that would it be well at least for the health purposes would it be sufficient for them to be doing that or should it be better that they avoid it? Uh, yeah, I think they should have. I would say my our advice would be that they should discuss with their doctors. And yeah, this that. is something definitely to be discussed. Uh, we shouldn't be too you know too like hard in the sense that you know become such a, so brave that you just fast and is actually. You know, um, it's actually, you know, impacting the child and everything, the baby, etc. in the womb. But on the other side, you shouldn't be just jumping on it. Yeah, taking the first avoiding fast. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just be balanced, inshallah. Next, next thing is making up the miss fast. Yes. So, uh, how do we do that? So, uh, first one is, if you want to do qada of X number of fast, just say 10. Yeah. Because of health issues or whatever. And you want to keep them outside Ramadan. Then... Scholars have mentioned based on Quran and Hadith that you can do them all ten together or you can just break it up. To whatever makes know, it easy. As they are to your convenience. But it's important, I think, people write it down. In the keep, process, keep if tra- they die, then Fidi has to Fidia be given. Be given yeah, so definitely. it's important they tell their family or they write it down. And I would advise sisters, especially, they can't fast you know, for those number of days in Ramadan. They should let their husbands know, like, you know, I've got this many fasts. Allah knows, you know, people die every day. If you were to die, at least he is aware of how many days of fidya he needs to give yeah, on her behalf. That's important. And likewise, if somebody is now delaying and taking the advantage in such a way that another Ramadan comes, and it so happens, it's unbelievable. Some people do that. I forget, sometimes it happens out of forgetfulness. Yeah, so what do they do? They fast the next so in that Ramadan. In that case, yeah, you, obviously, first and foremost, you fulfill that Ramadan and you make it up as soon as possible. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. And then the third point is, what if someone is traveling? So whilst they're traveling, they are forgiven from fasting. Yeah. What if they die in the, on that day, in the in their journey? So if they happen to die in that journey, in that case, what they would have to do is make up for it for the make person. Make up for that one, the one before. So I'm, I'm, uh, what I understand from this is, if someone is traveling, so yeah. for example, on the fifth day of Ramadan, they are traveling. Yeah. So whilst they're traveling, they pass away. Yeah. That day is forgiven. Yeah. That's like basically if someone forgiven. becomes sick on yeah. the fifth day and they know they're forgiven from fasting. Yeah. yeah? Then uh, they don't get the they, they don't get the chance to do qada because they passed away. Yeah. And that day's fasting is forgiven. Yeah. yeah However, definitely. if they are alive after the journey, or they come back, that's the point I think that's you want to make. Yeah. If they want to come back, they they are alive. Then what happens is they are able to. Uh, they have to keep those and they don't fast. Yeah. So they live two days after Ramadan basically. Yeah. And uh, or they live a day after well after Eid they, after Ramadan they live a day basically, yeah. and they have to keep that fast. So just to summarize it, if somebody is traveling whilst they are fasting and they have a car accident, Allah forbid, and they pass away. So that particular day, is, uh, you know, the journey, the day they took that journey and they passed away, family, they don't need to make up that fast. Yeah. Okay. However, if they were alive after that, after Ramadan, for another day, then they need to make that fast. Um, and then that's the same thing with the, with the person who is sick as well. Now coming to fidya. So Allah said, فَفِدِيَتُمْ uh, Allah said about those people who can't fast. Okay? What's the alternative? Uh, those people are الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُنَا فِدِيَتُمْ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ يُطِيقُنَا هُمْ مِنِنْ لَا يُطِيقُنَا Those people who don't have the, you know, the ability because of chronic illnesses or they pass away or whatever. What do they do? They give fidya. So they feed. So for every fast, they feed a person like a full day's food. Yeah. Or so there's a couple of that, options, isn't it? Yeah. So the option is, first option is they can feed them with the food. So first and foremost, if, meals. You, if you have one person, for example, feed him two meals. So you have your lunch and dinner and you do that for 60 days. So that's one option you have. And then the second option you that's, have I is... I think for 60 fast, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for 60 fast. Fast yeah. for a fast. We're talking about just one fast here. So yeah. if they miss one fast, then, for, then they feed that one person. Yeah, for that one. And this is why, one. just to translate here, and for the amount, Nabi Tassam didn't say five dirham or five pounds or whatever. No. He actually said... Half sa of wheat, which is about one and a half kg. Yeah, give or take. So half sa is like the ready-made containers those days. Yeah. It's translated and converted to about 1.5 kg. Again, that would depend. And I, I want to make this thing clear. Same thing with fidya and likewise, uh, you know, sadaqat al-fitr as well. Some yeah. people may see in one uh, Ramadan calendar, it says three pounds per person. Some might per say four, four pounds per person. So That's all based on a few things. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said you can give it with the wheat. Yeah. Wheat. Or they can give it with dates, etc. And now dates have their levels as well. Some are yeah. very expensive dates, ajwa like that. 
and then based on where they are, the location. So obviously, it's so something's going to be location. data going to be more expensive here than just say Makkah and Medina, etc. Hence, we have these different levels of uh, each individual masjid might yeah make a differentiation. Of yeah, that's important. This is why we always advise people stick with your local masjid, local Definitely. scholars. You know, don't be making decisions just just by googling randomly or you know just watching something on YouTube. Scholars whom you don't have direct contact with. Yeah. That's important here. If you have scholars online and you trust them and they are reputable scholars, that's important. So that these are the rules of fasting. And subhanAllah, I think we've covered you know yeah. the basic rules Not of fasting. Of but just to sort of clarify here, you know, the rules are there is to make this whole worship formal worship, isn't yeah. it? And we have that for uh, salah as well. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. Allah wants to see. Now, who is going to be the best in deeds? And Ramadan is a month of, a te of test for us as well. It's not just sort of exercise and, you know, um, and just another focus month so much on... In and out. Yeah. yeah, some you know, we don't want to see this as just pure exercise. It's actually ibadah. Definitely. And the purpose of ibadah and the, and the simple defin definition of ibadah is that we do what Allah tells us. Allah told us don't eat and drink <coughs> and have, uh, you know, direct sexual relations with your partners. From dawn, beginning of Fajr, until sunset. And we do it. We don't ask, why do we have to do it? We don't ask, how come till sunset? Why not? Or well, how come we can't just have water and then we abstain from it? We don't do that. Why? Because that's the meaning of ibadah. All right? We do what Allah tells us. Likewise with salah as well. And there's definitely benefits. We can clearly see that. There's benefits in the ahkam and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, ultimately, we are... Sub, uh, you know, submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's the most important thing our brother said Allah ended the verse of uh, <coughs> fasting you know, when he said Ya ayyuhal ladhina amal kutiba alaykum musiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun Allah wants to see that you know uh, perhaps we will you know, achieve taqwa control ourselves you know, and use this training for outside Ramadan this is why we are learning the rules of fasting so we want to be sure that we don't break our fast because this is not an option. Allah is forcing us to worship in Ramadan. Allah is forcing us to train. So if you do make mistakes, if you do make mistakes and, and, and if you are reckless, yeah. then that breaks the whole thing, doesn't it? The whole yeah. ibadah idea is gone and then after that. And then certain things Allah will not tolerate um, with the excuse of we didn't know. Yeah. And I would say for the five pillars of Islam, my brothers and sisters, that's non-negotiable. For Ramadan is here, many scholars, the TV is well here, and many other scholars, the local imams and everybody, they are trying to train people on the laws of fasting, on the ahkam and the rules and regulations of fasting, what makes a fast, what breaks a fast, what is the kafara, and all the brothers and sisters who are mature and over, there is farad on them, it's compulsory on you, brothers and sisters, to study these rules. Why? Because so that we can you know, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can make our Ramadan great. Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gives us the tawfiq, yeah, I mean, all the abilities to understand His rule and really make Ramadan a spiritual you know, um, and, and a very blessed Ramadan where we are spiritually I mean, connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing these physical acts, yeah. abstaining from some as well. وَأَخِرُ دَعْوَانَا and Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. For now, inshallah, we'll end it here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.